Hi there guys, Dave here from Player.net and today I'm here to show you some of the new features in uh, Microsoft's Windows 10 technical preview. So let's start with the name. There's been some debate about how Microsoft would brand its new operating system. Would it continue the numerical progression or break off with a name? We now know that the OS was referred to as Windows 9 thanks to Microsoft France President Alain Crozier's public name dropping, but the code name Threshold along with the abbreviation Windows TH were suggested. While others suggested the idea of going the way of the Xbox and adopting the one moniker until realizing that had been used. We now know the official name of the latest operating system from Microsoft is Windows 10, but why skip 9? Microsoft have implied it's going to be too good an improvement to simply call it Windows 9. It's not just the next in line. 9 wasn't enough, so it had to be 10. It's not the most impressive of announcements from the computing giant, but it's good to know. In other name news, Microsoft have dropped the Bing name from its apps and have rebranded as MSN. So I'll show you the first of the features now with the Start menu. The Start menu itself, which is familiar to all those non-Windows 8 users, has returned in full force for Windows 10, as it was missing in Windows 8 and 8.1. No longer does the menu obscure your entire screen, but instead acts as a customizable palette that can be resized at will make it as big or as small as you want as you can see here just by dragging it down like so and then back up again uh, not content to completely abandon Windows 8 though the start menu does consist of live tiles which are here on the right hand edge uh, and these tiles can be rearranged uh, to provide you with the experience you'd like when you open up the start menu Okay, like so. So you can put that one back up there, that one there, that one. You can go there, for example. Okay. Um, also present in the start menu is universal search, which pulls in results from the web. So, say I want to do a search for player.net. So, I could be looking for a document called that, or you know, it could load the web page, for example. So, by clicking on that, it would load your browser and then consequently the web page. Um, the Windows 8-esque Metro option can be activated with a touch type device such as a phone or laptop touchscreen. So next let's talk about universal apps. Windows has been trying to trend toward a more unified platform providing a cohesive experience for users on phones as users on desktops. Windows 10 stops wading in the idea and dives in headfirst. Microsoft chief Terry Myerson quotes, Our new Windows must be built from the ground up for a mobile first, cloud first world. And Windows, ain't, Windows 10 aims to be the most comprehensive platform ever. Developers building apps for Windows 10 will be able to build universal apps that will work anywhere on any device, from 4 inch screens to 80 inch screens. Microsoft also stated that this would mean the end of the modern app build that came with Windows 8. The company aims to remove the environment that split Windows 8 and Windows 7 apps and create a more familiar UI for users regardless of the input method. Microsoft says more is to come on universal apps and will be revealed at the Build Developer Conference in April 2015. So let's next talk about Snapfill and Snap Assist. Another bit of Windows 7 making a return and getting some revamping in Windows 10 is the snap feature. Dragging an application to one side of the screen will snap the app in place, resizing it to utilize screen real estate, like in Windows 7. The rest of the screen can then be filled by the other application occupying the remaining space available to maximize the screen. Up to four apps can be snapped on screen at a time, like so. and then you just select the other one you want and it goes up to the other window and that's how you do that so let's next take a look at the task view some would suggest it's stolen from Mac OS X expose feature but it's new to Windows users and another great addition for those trying to get more done represented by a new button on the taskbar task view provides users with multiple desktops to help organize their workflow so as you can see here all your windows that are open come up like they would in Mac OS X if you've ever seen that, the expose feature. At the bottom of the interface, users will see multiple desktops and all the apps they currently have open. 
Users will be able to switch between the desktops to use different apps at will. This allows users to set up different structures for work, home and other scenarios that may require specific apps or services. So as you can see here, you can add as many or as few as you like and then you just click the X to remove them. So next we're going to talk about the command prompt. Microsoft has made some modifications and though it looks the same visually, Microsoft promising improvements have been made, including the inclusion of the ability to use keyboard shortcuts within the prompt. This means that users will be able to copy and paste directories within the prompt rather than having to go into a context menu and press paste. Like so. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the touch controls. Even with the new compromised style of Windows 10, that brings the mouse and keyboard crowd back into the fold, touch controls aren't going anywhere in this new operating system. The charms bar of Windows 8 is back with some improvements in place. Likewise, some Windows 10 commands have touch-friendly functions. Swiping from left to right in Windows 10 gives you task view, which is displayed with larger buttons to make interacting with it more compatible for touch users. This will be familiar for those who have used some of the touch functionality built into Windows 7, where touch controls were simply scaled up. For 2-in-1 devices, those that make the transition between laptop and tablet form, a new mode called Continuum will make switching easier than ever. It switches based on the input method, so when a keyboard is attached, users will get an interface more friendly for that input, and when it's in tablet mode, the UI is targeted towards touch control. So let's now start with the conclusion. Microsoft opted to take its time with the reveal. The September 30th event in San Francisco was targeted towards enterprise users. An attempt to somewhat comfort Windows 7 users into thinking that Windows 10 will be great for them. I get the feeling there's a lot more for Microsoft to share about Windows 10, but we won't get to see that until the Build Developer Conference in April 2015. What's known though, is that Windows 10 is a mix and match of parts from Windows 7 and Windows 8, an attempt to please all users no matter what input method they use. How that is executed is still yet to be revealed. I'm glad to see it doesn't differ too much from Windows 7 and Windows 8, having used both operating systems personally. I feel the additions I've mentioned will be of some benefit to businesses and home users, while I think that some of the features such as adding another desktop in the task view might not be needed on a personal computer you'd use at home.